everybody, it's the Magic Crafter. We're gonna do a little walk and talk video today. So, let's talk about something. What do mermaids look like? Does anybody know the answer to that question? Because I don't know. As far as I know, mermaids aren't real. Like, I've never seen a mermaid. Science can't prove they're mermaids. So, how do we know what they look like? Well, usually we judge what they look like based on what the media shows us. We are really close here. And the media will typically show you that mermaids are, let's see, they are fair skinned. Mermaids usually have big seashells, if you know what I mean. And they are quite slender. Usually they're very curvaceous. And oftentimes they're depicted as having red hair and a green tail. Just because you see something on a cartoon, or you read about something in a book, or you see artwork or whatever that shows one thing, doesn't mean that's the way everything is. Because I can tell you right now that I am a professional mermaid, and most mermaids don't look like this. Have you ever seen one in a story that looks like this? I don't, my face is pretty crazy. And your face can be as crazy as you want it to be too. So let's talk about a couple of things real quick here. Set my camera down for a second because your girl needs a break. I have refilmed this multiple times and I'm getting tired. So first things first, let's talk about uh, the fair skin that you typically see in mermaids such as the mermaid from Splash or Aquamarine or the Little Mermaid or the mermaids from Peter Pan, basically all mermaids, parts of the Caribbean. Usually, I think that one had one that was a different skin color. Usually you will see mermaids depicted as having pale skin being Caucasian or white. We can, we can be kind of informal here, right? White. So here's the thing. Mermaids don't have to be a certain skin color or mermen for that matter. Are you laughing at me, Trees? Or are you agreeing? I think they're agreeing. They're agreeing, yeah. Um, mermaids and mermen don't have to be a certain skin color. And I've actually had people come to me in the YouTube comments and also on Instagram too, saying that they feel discouraged from becoming a mermaid, be that a professional mermaid or just a mermaid as a hobby because of their skin color, because they don't see their skin color or ethnicity represented in the mermaid community. And to you, I have this to say, it does not matter what your skin color is because first of all, kids aren't looking at your skin color or your face at all. They're staring at your tail. Let's be honest here. They don't give a carp fish about your face or how you look. They're just fascinated with your old scaly tail. I'm living proof right here. If I can look like this and have kids coming up to me and flocking around me, then you can have darker skin or lighter skin or skin of a different coloration. It doesn't matter. Sure, you might have some adults, if anything, that might make some comments. And really, I think that it doesn't really matter what color your skin is or how you look at all, you're always going to have some rude people that will say some things. There are a couple of people who will judge you no matter what. They'll judge you just because you have a tail and because you do what you do. Let's be real. But if you are a mermaid of color and you do have some concerns about maybe the way people react or if people might say something to you or if you won't be able to get jobs because of the way you look, like certain modeling jobs or whatever, then I suggest that you talk to other people who are also mermaids of color or mermen of color or of a certain ethnicity. They don't have to be the same as ethnicity or color as you. You can talk to just people in general who aren't the classic pale mermaid and maybe just discuss your concerns. I guarantee you that somebody has been exactly where you are right now if you are concerned about this sort of thing. But with that being said, if anyone does ever come to you and say something, you just come over here to me and I'll take care of the problem. <laughs> Insert fangs. <laughs> but don't you ever let the way you look on the outside affect your choice to become a mermaid, especially something so petty as your skin color or your origins and where you come from because, I mean, you can be from just about any country. I went to Singapore and there were mermaids from nine different countries and many different ethnicities that were professional mermaids or mermen and we all had a great time, got along great, and they were awesome people. So it doesn't matter what you look like, especially when it comes to skin color. Now, as far as age goes, 
Age doesn't really matter either. Although, of course, if you are really young, being a professional mermaid probably isn't an option for you because of like legal matters, at least depending on your country, I'd imagine. But uh, yeah, I mean, usually if you're over the age of 18, you should be okay, at least in America. Um, 21 is when you get like all the rights, so you'd definitely be okay if you're 21. But if you're an older mermaid, this is actually more of like a walk a couple of feet and then sit down. <laughs> But if you are like an older mermaid, like 40s, 50s, 70s, 80s, whatever, it doesn't matter. Again, people are looking at your tail and they're going to just love the fact that you're being a mermaid. Now, if people are being rude, no, that's not okay. Um, but unfortunately, again, people are that way sometimes, no matter who you are or what you're doing, people are going to be rude sometimes because some people just are bad people. Not gonna lie, there's such thing as bad people, it seems. But if you love being a mermaid or merman or mermaiding, whether it's professionally or just for fun, don't let people or the fear of what people might say or think keep you from doing what you love. Fun fact, I actually had my mom try my mermaid tail and she had a lot of fun. There are lots of mermaids who are older, so if you think that age is an issue, remember that uh, there are plenty of people who really made it big, whether it's acting or modeling or creating things, starting businesses that had success when they're older. So don't let age keep you from doing what you do. Shall we walk a bit? We shall walk a bit. All right, next thing is gender because here on the Magic Crafter, we never leave out our men because I love men. Men are awesome. Women are awesome too, I love women too. Not in like a sexual way, I'm attracted to men. Sorry ladies, um, but men are great. And a lot of people I think discourage men from doing a lot of things these days and kind of exclude them from a lot of things. And it's, it's just unfair. I have a brother, I have a dad. Uh, I love guys, guys are great. Guys are, I sometimes get along with them better than women. <laughs> Not going to lie. But uh, if you are a guy, whether you are straight or gay, you can be a mermaid, or merman, I guess we call it. You can call yourself a mermaid if you want to. There's nothing wrong with that. But you can certainly be a merman. There are plenty of mermen in the community. So if you are afraid that you won't be able to swim in a tail because you are a guy and not a girl, even if you are a girl that turned into a guy, like, I know all the technical terms for that, please don't hate on me. I'm out of breath, I'm getting over a cold, and I work with preschoolers most of the time, so I don't know a lot of things and stuff. But <laughs> if you are a guy or identify as a guy, you can certainly be, where's the trail go? That way? I'm lost, I don't know. I've been on here a million times, but you can be a mermaid or merman, it doesn't matter at all. And if people give you rude comments, just brush it off, because I know that sometimes with guys, uh, you get a lot of things. Just, you know, there are certain things that guys aren't supposed to do because it's not manly. And people frown upon it, might even tease you, say some things. Again, unfortunately people can be rude sometimes and you just have to learn to br brush certain things off. But it is a harsh reality that people are that way. Find a spot to sit. But if people do give you attitude like that, remember that for every person who is rude, there are probably a couple hundred people that are great and awesome. And the ones that really count, I'll say this, the people whose opinions really count, especially when it comes to this, the kids. And if you're a guy and there are you know, maybe a couple of little boys who see you as a merman, imagine their excitement when they realize that, oh my gosh, I could be a merman too. That probably, at least in my opinion, that is much more valuable and much more important than that one person that says, you can't be a merman, you can't have a tail, guys can't be mermaids, whatever. Yeah, so if you are a guy and you're worried about being made fun of or anything like that, just remember what's important and whose opinions really count and make sure that you focus on the good rather than the bad. And remember too that there are many people in the community who have been through what you have been through. So if you do feel harassed or if you feel 
like you need some support, there are definitely people in the community that you can reach out to that I'm sure can help talk you through some things and be there to help you overcome some challenges and resistance. Out of breath again. There's a golf course right over there, so we're going to probably sit down for a little bit before we get up and walk again and talk again. And since I'm on a roll, I'm gonna keep talking and then we'll move a little bit more. So this next thing I want to talk about is the matter of body shape and being slender and having big boobs, big curves, and maybe a big badonkadonk because a lot of people are into that nowadays. Remember, before we talk about anything else, that you are a gift. You were created by your parents, love them or hate them. Your body is their gift to you. And if you're into this kind of stuff, your body is a gift from God or the universe or source or whatever you want to call it. Your body is a gift and it can do so many amazing things. The fact that you can propel yourself through the water and on land and that you can like climb up ladders and walk up stairs or do a push up or wave your hands or whatever, talk with your big old mouth. That is amazing. You are amazing. You could have been like a rock or something. You could have been a mosquito, but no, you are a human being and that is pretty awesome. So before we talk about bodies, just remember that, keep perspective, that no matter what you look like, you are awesome and you are full of so much potential and it's amazing. <laughs> but something that is a reality that we do need to talk about is body shape. We are getting a ton of wind noise. It's kind of windy here. Maybe we should move. Maybe we will move. We are going to go hide behind a tree. Let's go. Ah, so body image. Uh, yes. Mermaids are typically shown as having very slender bodies, very curvaceous, as we mentioned earlier, and the reality is that there's hardly anybody on this planet that looks that way naturally. You are not going to look the way that the media typically portrays mermaids as looking. It's just not natural. I mean, no matter how much I work out, I will never look like a supermodel because my body's just not built that way. Like, I have hips that are, like, really close to my ribs. Like, I have a very tiny waist, like short wise like it's not I don't know how to explain it but basically I look like a caterpillar like even when I work out like I, my body just doesn't look like bloop it's more like bloop, bloop, no matter what I do and I can't change that because that is my body unless I'm gonna get surgery or something um, and I also I don't have seashells if you know what I mean I definitely have more like zebra muscle shells I mean I don't know pretty tiny, pretty tiny little girls. And it's okay. I don't ever have any little kids complain about the shape of my body or the way it looks. But because so many of us see what's on the media and what's on TV, what's around us and what's kind of put out there is like, this is the perfect image. We tend to fall prey to that. And a lot of people try to look a certain way. Remember, again, you are born perfect. Are we getting wind noise, seriously? We better not be. Thank you, wind. That's right, you stay in your place, I'll stay in mine. But there is, sadly, and I hate to talk about this because it is kind of a touchy topic, and if you are triggered by things that discuss weight, and um, body shape and everything, please skip ahead. I'll put a timestamp right here to where you can skip ahead to. Uh, please skip ahead, I don't want any issues here. But there is a certain point where you can be too big or too small to be a mermaid. Now let me explain before people give me a bunch of hate on this. I know this firsthand. So a few years ago, um, after my boyfriend and I broke up, I relapsed and had an eating disorder relapse and I lost a ton of weight. And it wasn't something that I thought I was doing to myself, I thought I was being healthy, but sometimes when you have issues like that, things spiral out of control despite your best efforts. You can think you're doing something right and you're actually doing it way wrong. 
And that was the case. I lost a ton of weight. My doctor told me that, you know, you are dangerously tiny. And I was getting to the point where I didn't have periods anymore. I couldn't do normal things, like walking up the stairs hurt so bad, and I was really, really slow because my knees hurt, my bones hurt, like everything ached. I was cold all the time, I was really depressed, and my brain was all in a fog, and it was just a terrible, a terrible time to be honest. And my tail actually saved me because my tail is like a little angel. I love Sparta so much, someday we'll have to talk about him and how awesome he is. But my tail saved me because I put it on and I realized, uh, as you can see here, I'll post a little image here. Again, if you're sensitive to this kind of stuff, skip ahead. This here is a picture of when I was too tiny. Now to some people that might look normal, but for my body shape and for how my body is built, that is way too tiny. And again, I was getting to the point where things were starting to shut down and I was on a down downward spiral and it was really bad. And truth be told, I was so skinny, I couldn't be a mermaid. Now, that's not because my tail didn't fit me. If you are too big and you lose the weight that you need to lose and your tail doesn't fit you anymore, that is an awesome thing. That was not where I was at. I got my tail when I was just healthy. Like after I just recovered from an eating disorder, that was my celebration, I got my tail. Then I knew I relapsed when it didn't fit and things weren't working as they were. And I actually got to the point where I couldn't swim. My body didn't have the insulation and the energy that it needed to swim in the water, to function. Like I would wear a winter coat in the summertime in general because I was so cold. And swimming wasn't an option for me anymore. And I definitely didn't have the energy to swim in my tail. And it actually hurt to swim because of my joints and everything, they just weren't cushioned by the layer of fat or whatever it is that they needed. My body just wasn't in a good place. And so there is a point where you can be too small to be a mermaid. And there is also a point where you can be too big, at least I'd assume, to be a mermaid. So I don't want to judge anybody on the way they look because that's not how we should judge each other. We should judge how healthy we are and that's something that you and your doctor need to determine. I'm not here giving you medical advice, but I do advise you that if you do feel that you are too big or too small to be a mermaid, wind, go away. <laughs> Check with your doctor and make sure you are healthy because that should be a big focus of yours. And you don't want to get a silicone mermaid tail, especially when you're in a bad place. Like I said, I waited until after I had gotten better to get my tail so that I could use that as a gauge for determining when I was getting too thin or if I was getting to a point where I was too big, which usually it's not an issue because my tail stretches quite a bit, so we're good. So, but as far as your body shape goes and as far as like if you're a fat mermaid or a skinny mermaid or an in-between mermaid, that doesn't matter. Just be healthy and make sure that you are living a good quality of life. If you are bigger than Ariel or Splash or popular mermaids that are in the mermaid community, so what? If you are tinier than some of them, so what? As long as you are healthy. If you're a girl and you have tiny boobs and a big giant belly, as long as you're healthy, that's great. Or you could have tiny little boobs and a caterpillar shaped tiny body. It doesn't matter. You can still be a mermaid. And if you're a guy, you don't have to have big pecs and big guns and have a nice, perfectly oiled, slim, chiseled cut body. If you have a dad bod, it doesn't matter. You can be a mermaid or merman as long as you are healthy. So yes, um, color doesn't matter. Your age doesn't matter, whether you're a guy or a girl doesn't matter, whether you are a big mermaid or a small mermaid, doesn't matter. As long as you are happy with yourself, as long as you are being yourself, and as long as you are healthy, none of that matters. Just have a fun time, do what you love, and be yourself. As I always say here on the channel, you should always be yourself, even if you can be a mermaid because you are a piece of the puzzle of this giant picture that we call the world. And without your little puzzle piece, this picture would not be complete. It would be missing your special magic that you have to offer. 
So be you, be true to you, don't try to be someone else, don't be ashamed of who you are, have a good time, get outside, and do your thing. I'm gonna go though because we're approaching the golf course and they get really mad if you talk or make any noises. Although they talk pretty loud sometimes, but you're not allowed to talk if you're on the trail because heaven forbid, they miss their ball. Oh, by the way, um, next Friday, I think we're going to do a craft video. It's going to probably be a craft video about making a certain wind chime, maybe like a fairy crystal wind chime. It's gonna be pretty cool. But if you have any suggestions for other videos, I have time to film. I am like stuck at home because of this virus thing. So any suggestions you have, we'll try to make it a reality here at the Magic Crafter. See you next Friday. Mm -hmm.